Hey guys, Josh here with The Weekend Angler. Hope you all are doing great. Today we're going to be continuing our series on budget lithium battery reviews. And this time we're going to be taking a close look at one of the better known names in the budget battery market. And that's Redodo. Now we've already tested a few batteries on the channel, but we're wanting to find out how does a Redodo stack up against this competition. So stick around, we're going to put this popular battery to the test. And let's find out if it's the right choice for your next fishing trip. Alright guys, like I was saying in this video, we're going to be taking a look at another budget lithium iron phosphate battery. And this time we've got one sent to us by the Redodo company. And what they sent me was a 12 volt, 100 amp hour, group 31 lithium iron phosphate battery. And this battery is specifically tailored for trolling motor use. And it is Bluetooth enabled, so we should be able to connect to it using an app, find out all kinds of data about the battery. So let's not waste any time. Let's step over to the table. We'll get this battery unboxed, take a look at it, and then we'll start our testing. One of the nice things about this battery is it does have Bluetooth monitoring capability. In order to install the app, all you have to do is scan the QR code located at the top of the battery. It'll take you to the uh, respective app store, in this case Android. We'll get that Redodo app installed. And the app is only 27 megabytes, so it doesn't take up a lot of room on our phone. Now that the app's installed, let's open it up, connect to the battery. We'll click on add device. We should be able to add it via Bluetooth. Now it does ask for location permissions. We'll go ahead and allow those. It'll automatically search for the device and it's not found. We'll try scanning again. Once again, it's not found. So let's try adding that via the QR code. It is a different QR code located on the other end of the battery. Scanning the QR code puts it in connection mode. Attempted to connect to the battery. And once again, it failed. So at this point, both connection methods have been unsuccessful. Yeah, I think we need some help on this one. All right, well, I wasn't expecting a hiccup this early into the uh, video, but it happened. And so I showed it to you. Uh, what we ran into, I was not able to connect with the app to the battery through the Bluetooth and uh, went through the troubleshooting steps of the app. It said to charge the battery, stuck a voltmeter on the battery, and it's, that thing's registering 3.2 volts right now, which means it's in the shutoff state from the BMS, means the battery dipped below the uh, low voltage threshold. It's not a big deal. We've got the charger on the battery. We're gonna get this thing up to 100% and try it again. So I'll see you guys when this thing gets fully charged. All right, well, it took a little bit, but the charger now says that the battery is fully charged. That means it's time to go ahead and try that app out one more time and see if we can connect to the battery via Bluetooth. All right, just like before, we're in the Redodo app. We'll hit Add Device. We'll add via Bluetooth. Scans for the battery. This time the battery is located. We'll go ahead and click on that. It's connecting to the battery. And the connection was successful this time. So we can go ahead and hit device info. It shows the state of charge is currently at 100%. We have no power going into or out of the battery. 
Capacity is showing at 105 amp hours and all cells are showing balanced. We'll go over to the device controls menu and right there, look at that. Turn off. You can turn the battery off and to turn it on, you charge a device to turn it on. I bet that's why we could not connect via Bluetooth earlier. Now, if you've ever watched any of my battery test videos before, you know I always go through the same series of tests, and I do that for a couple of reasons. One, I want to be fair to all the battery manufacturers, give them all the same chance to pass or fail the test, and it allows you, the viewer, to go through, watch all these review videos, and see how these batteries compare to one another. So the first test we're going to be doing is a battery load test, and to do so, we're going to be using this 100 amp load tester. Now what this does is it applies a 100 amp load to the battery and will do so for a period of about 10 seconds. Now on the face of the load tester is a meter and it will show our initial voltage on the battery. When we flip the switch and apply a 100 amp load to the battery, the battery voltage will drop and we want that voltage to stay somewhere in this little green area on the meter itself. As long as it does so, we know that the battery is capable of doling out a 100 amp load for a period of 10 seconds, which is more than adequate for getting a feel for how this battery is going to perform. So let's go ahead and get the load tester hooked up, put it through the first test, and we'll see how this Redodo smart battery performs. All right, we hook this up just like we would a battery charger. Red goes to the positive terminal, black goes to the negative. As you can see, the battery is reading about 13 volts. And when we engage this 100 amp load test, we'll want this to stay in that green zone. Alright guys, well the Redodo battery handled the 100 amp load test without any issues at all. And that means we are ready to proceed to test number two. I'm not going to lie to you, this is always my favorite test that I do with these lithium batteries. And this is the torture test, the runtime test, longevity test, however you want to word it. But uh, if you've never seen this test before, let me explain it to you. What we do is we take our lithium battery, we get a regular trolling motor, we drop that trolling motor down into a tank of water, we hook up all kinds of test equipment to the battery, and we're going to run that thing from 100% capacity all the way down until the battery management system inside the battery cuts off the voltage. So we're going to run it from 100 to 0. And when we get done, we're going to use the data that we have to calculate exactly how many amp hours we got out of our battery. Now just for reference, this battery is rated at 100 amp hours, so we should expect to see at least 100 amp hours out of the battery. So let's go ahead and move over. We're going to go out to the garage where I've got everything set up and we're going to put this thing to the test and see how she'll perform. All right, our test motor in this test is a Minn Kota Endura C2 12 volt, 30 pound thrust trolling motor. We're going to be monitoring the battery voltage using this BK Precision 5460 multimeter. And we'll monitor the amperage drawn by the trolling motor with this Proster CM6000 DC clamp ammeter. Let's go ahead and get the trolling motor connected to the battery. We're also going to put a couple of these terminals on and that will help us connect the multimeter to the battery for voltage monitoring. We'll get the terminals tightened down securely. And we'll connect our test leads for the multimeter so we can monitor the voltage. Might as well connect with the battery app as well. Clock is going to monitor runtime. Multimeter is going to monitor battery voltage. Let's turn this thing on. See how it's going to run. Test conditions are shown in the lower corner of your screen. We'll go over those when the test is complete. And I will say the Bluetooth monitoring app is giving fairly accurate information on the battery. All 
All that's left now is to see how long she'll run. Let's see what we learned from our runtime test. We began the test at 8 o'clock p.m. Test concluded at 7.49 a.m. for a total runtime of 11 hours, 49 minutes. The average current drawn from the battery during the test was 9.5 amps. Now we can calculate amp hours by using the formula current multiplied by the discharge time. We'll plug in our known values into that equation. That gives us amp hours is equal to 9.5 amps multiplied by 11.817 hours for a total of 112.26 amp hours out of this 100 amp hour rated battery. This is roughly what I expected to see out of this runtime test. I think we got a good handle on how this battery is going to perform. What are your thoughts on this battery's performance? Leave a comment below. All right, guys. Well, the torture test of this lithium battery has come to an end. I've got it sitting back here on the table, getting charged back up to 100%. It gave us a great effort throughout the torture test. Ran for a little over 11 and a half hours continuously. And that actually gave us, as you saw from the test data, a little bit more than the 100 amp hours of rated capacity. So no complaints at all on this Redodo lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, next thing we're going to be doing with the battery is taking it out. I've been in the mood to do some bank fishing. I usually take a lead acid trolling motor battery with me, but we're going to be taking the Redodo instead. One, because it's lighter, and two, because I want to see how it's going to perform running my LED lights, running my bait tank, probably charging my phone to be totally honest, all that good stuff. So I'm going to get everything together. We're going to get this battery charged back up to 100%, and then we're going to go out maybe try to catch a fish. So see you guys in just a minute. I do have a video showing how to build these rod holders too. We'll go ahead and get the bait tank hooked up and running. This is on a automatic cyclic timer. And you guessed it, I have a video showing how to build this bait tank. So check it out too when you're done. And yes, I did bounce between a few spots. Took me a while to find some bait, but we come up with some bluegills. So there we go. All right, just to go over what we have hooked up to the battery right now, we still have our bait tank running on the cyclic timer. We have the LED light that's lighting up the rods. I'm charging my phone at the same time, and since the fish really aren't cooperating other than these couple little bites, 
I've also even got my tablet hooked up on charge and streaming some TV. Amp draw probably somewhere around five or six amps total. Lasted all night and we got skunked. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna blame that full moon for that. After that skunk, I brought the battery home, set it down, did not charge it. Went out the next weekend to fish a tournament with Mr. Danny Stone of Danny Stone Outdoors. And there's a list of everything we're powering. Oh, man. That one's playing good. Look at the splash. Let me see if that'll work. That'll work. You see that? Yep. Yep. Done it again. I told you they were going to close the show with a fish. I told y'all. And I will tell you, there is never a dull moment if Danny Stone is in the boat. I called it. Ain't this a little feller? <laughs> At least it ain't a bass. All right, guys. Well, that's going to pretty much bring us to the end of our video. We actually did end up taking that battery out a couple times. Didn't charge it between the two trips. Uh, first trip I fished from about 9 p.m. until 5 a.m. And then the next one from about 5 p.m. until a little after midnight or so and uh, the battery's still sitting about 85-90% charge so uh, I think my days of lugging around that big 70 pound lead acid battery are pretty well over I think we're going to be uh, using that Redoto from now on and uh, we might even do a power bank build video with that coming up real soon uh, before we finish off, I do want to take a moment to thank the Redoto company for sending me this battery, allowing me to test it out, and showing you, my viewers, just how it performs under controlled tests. And we usually end up taking it out and have a little bit of fun with it too. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Links to the battery are down in the description. You can go over, check out their website, find out any information you want about this battery, contact them if there's questions you have that I wasn't able to get answered. And if you're looking to buy one, there's also a promo code down there right next to that link. That'll save you a little bit of money, too. So, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, if it's helped you out, please take a moment. Give it that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, check me out for the first time. Guys, I do a lot of these test videos. I do DIY videos, fishing videos, you name it. Just about anything, we do it here. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell next to it. That way you don't miss any videos. So, guys, that's all I've got for this one. Appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, we catch you out on the water.